Today, we're going to be looking at what we feel is one of the most visually exciting affordable lens sets on the market. We'll get into why in a minute, but in the meantime, we're curious to hear about some of the lenses that have you mesmerized. Leave a comment down below and let's see if we can agree on any favorites. Before we get started, we'd like to thank Nightcore for helping us get our hands on these lenses for review. These days, generally speaking, if you have a modern camera that has competitive performance and features, you might be hard pressed to really tell one apart from another at a glance. Lenses, on the other hand, can contribute a lot of character to your final image, and they can stay with you through your career a lot longer than any one camera is likely to. Hence the old saying, date the camera, marry the lens. When you're buying and not renting, especially for your first real cinema set, we all have to use our lenses on a range of projects, from more creative things that can get away with a wilder look, to more restrained corporate work, where you need a cleaner, more controlled image that doesn't distract too much. Now don't get us wrong, where the line between character and restraint lands will be subjective, but for us, we think we've found it. These are the Nightcore Superior Prime Full Frame Cine Lenses. They cover full frame and come in EF or PL mount, and are interchangeable. You can pick up the lenses separately, but if you buy the full set together, you get a nice hard case. Today, we're going to be looking at the 25 to 75 mm At T2, these lenses are not the slowest or fastest in town, but they are full of character, and they're pretty sharp and very usable wide open with pleasing skin rendition. They produce dreamy images with heaps of 3D pop. We knew that we'd found something special when I couldn't stop myself from looking at what I'd captured for a little bit longer than I intended to. The bokeh is swirly, and the transition to out-of-focus areas reminds me of vintage anamorphic lenses. It's just beautiful. The lens flares are probably the thing that will divide opinions. They're anything but minimal, and across the set they're quite similar. There's a loss of contrast as well as visible lens elements. These especially will be subjective, but so far I've had nothing but compliments from clients and other filmmakers, sometimes even requesting more flares. Even with that said, we do still recommend having a matte box at hand with side flags for these lenses, for the times where you do want a bit more control. Like with most lenses, stopping down will bring back some contrast, but it won't get rid of the lens flares and shapes. We've been using the small rig 95mm multifunctional matte box with variable ND filter and side flag kit. We recently reviewed it on our channel, and it's been working a treat. When it comes to the lenses themselves, we can see that perhaps the price point is justified. They're large and solid, and they look and feel like professional tools. The focus and aperture rings are smooth, though it has to be said that the resistance does not feel identical throughout the set especially with some of the aperture rings being on the firmer side for my taste. However, this could be because we're looking at individual lenses here and not ones that came from one set. Regardless, they do still feel very well put together in spite of the differences here. Speaking about consistency, they do all feature 95mm fronts for clamp-on matte boxes, and they do seem to be threaded, though we have not been able to find a filter or step-up or step-down ring that'll fit them. Each lens has a slightly different minimum focus. As we go wider, we can get a little bit closer to our subjects, which is interesting. The minimums throughout are just okay and certainly not outstanding. For filming people and locations, they're fine, but you probably won't be able to get macro shots or close-ups for projects like product shoots out of them. Although not perfectly matching in color, the lenses match near enough visually for our liking. This is not uncommon for more budget-friendly options. We found similar issues with our SLR Magics, and I've heard the same thing about the Mikey set. But these night cores are closer together than most. Something to consider here that 25mm is the widest in the set, so the set doesn't really have an ultra-wide angle option to speak of. For years, there have been rumors of a wider lens coming, but given how many times these lenses have changed between companies and how much time has passed, I think it's pretty unlikely that we'll be seeing anything come to market. Another thing to talk about is the cost. The full set goes for approximately 10,000 USD or 17,000 AUD. These lenses sit right between more budget options by companies like Mikey, Irex, or DZO, and the more expensive professional staples like the Sigma Arts, Canon CNEs, or Tokinas. As much as we love the look, we do wonder if many may be cautious about this price point from a lesser known lens manufacturer. But I don't think there's too much more to add here. They are a little bit pricier than some of the cheaper alternatives, but if you do take the plunge, you're rewarded with beautiful and interesting images, and I do think that that's worth the money. I think they're also built to look and feel professional. We've been getting nothing but compliments about how good they look on camera, as well as the quality of the images that they produce on every shoot we've taken them on. With all of that said, the look is still the look, and it'll be subjective. Let us know what you think down below. We'll also have a link down there to where you can get your own set of Nightcores. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like what we're doing, and follow us on our handles below. See you on the next one. I think you might be